It's a new month, which means new movies, including the highly anticipated Barbenheimer battle of 2023. Let's talk about my most anticipated movies for July. Welcome to Box of Chocolates, where you never know what you're going to get. Leave your thoughts down in the comments below about what movies you're looking forward to in the month of July. And of course, subscribe to the channel if you want to see reviews for all of these movies when they come out. So, starting off with my number five is The Haunted Mansion. I have no attachment to the ride, I've never been on it, but I do have a lot of nostalgia for the Eddie Murphy film. I haven't watched it in many, many years. If I watched it now, would it hold up? I have no idea. Maybe not. But I have a lot of fond memories of that as a kid. They've been trying to get a new one off the ground for a long time, so I'm curious. I don't think it's going to blow me away or anything, but I'm curious to see what kind of tone they bring, what they do with it. The only weird thing is that it's coming out in July. It feels like it would be great for October. You got a lot of horror movies in September, October. If you have a nice, big, family-friendly spooky movie at the theater, that could be really cool. But... July. Either way, I've avoided any trailers. I don't know what this is going to be like at all, but I am curious. So we'll see how it turns out. It's my number five. With number four, we're sticking with horror, and that is Insidious The Red Door. I have a lot of memories surrounding the first Insidious. It has its issues for sure, but I do still enjoy it. There's another one of the sequels that I enjoy quite a bit, one that's kind of okay-ish, and one that I don't like at all. Which is which? Well, you'll have to stay tuned for my Insidious ranking when the new one comes out. But I will tell you now, the fourth movie, The Last Key, that's one that's pretty, eh, not terrible, but uninteresting. And so I didn't really have a lot of interest left in future Insidious films. The reason I am anticipating this one is because it is Patrick Wilson's directorial debut. I've always liked him as an actor. I've always liked a lot of the collaborations he's done with James Wan, from Insidious to The Conjuring to Aquaman. So I really wanna see what he's gonna be able to do, what he learned from working with James Wan all those times, what kind of his own unique style he might bring to it. We just had Michael B. Jordan take over directing Creed 3 earlier this year, and that turned out beautifully. So hopefully Patrick Wilson can bring something good here. And we're bringing back the original family, we're wrapping it all up, supposedly. Insidious 2 really kind of left them on a happy ending, so I'm curious to see if they will justify bringing it all back and giving us a solid ending for them. If I had to guess, we would go into the backstory of the Darth Maul demon, although he's a demon, specifically stated, not a ghost. So I don't know if he has a backstory, I don't know what a demon is exactly in the Insidious lore, but... I don't know, give him a backstory. So maybe we'll get some cool twists, reveals, I don't know, could be fun. Number three, moving into the great showdown, Oppenheimer. Now to be honest, really the big reason that I'm looking forward to this is because it is Christopher Nolan, one of my favorite directors. Other than that, just the idea of an Oppenheimer biopic, I would be like, oh, I don't know. Could be good, maybe. Might check it out. It's Christopher Nolan's name that is getting me interested. Now, from Nolan, I typically prefer a nice, mind-bending thriller. So when it's announced that he's directing something like Dunkirk, I'm like, oh, he's making a war movie? Uh, not really exactly what I want from him, but I'll see it, because it's Nolan. I had the same reaction when this was announced. Oh, he's making a biopic? Eh, not not really what I'd like to see from him, but I'm sure it'll be of quality. I'm sure there's going to be a lot of great visuals. It's probably going to be the best looking and sounding explosion of all time. Nolan's just out there recreating nuclear blasts because he can. It has every actor of all time in it, apparently. And I'm really excited to see Killian Murphy's performance leading a Nolan film. I think he's really going to knock it out of the park. I think he's going to be phenomenal. But moving on to my number two, it is Barbie. And the reason I'm anticipating that more more than Oppenheimer is because with Oppenheimer, I think at least I mostly know what I'm going to get. I think Nolan will bring a lot of quality to the execution, but in general, it's going to be the story of Oppenheimer. With Barbie, it's something that I feel like I really need to see what Greta Gerwig is going for to know. Because when they announced this, I, there's been so much confusion. Like, is it going to be a little kids movie? And then Greta Gerwig is attached and you got that 2001 a space odyssey teaser and it's like okay are we going for some 
subversive meta commentary here? Is it an interesting mix? Who is this gonna appeal to? I don't know if I'm gonna be into it. I don't know if I'm gonna love it, but I feel like I have to see it to know exactly what it's gonna be. It really has my curiosity. And honestly, Ryan Gosling has been doing a lot to get me hyped because all the interviews and everything with him have just been hilarious as he's been talking about finding his Kennergy and shit like that. And I I'm kind of most excited to see Ken <laughs> just because it seems like Ryan Gosling is having so much fun with this, but I feel like it'll be unique. Again, I don't know who it's going to appeal to. I don't know if somebody's going to bring a little kid to this and then it's going to go over their heads. I don't know if it's going to appeal to them. I need to know what's up with Barbie. I'm not ashamed to say I'm anticipating Barbie. Didn't really think I would be, but here we are. It also looks very colorful, which is great. I do love the idea of these two on the same day. It's just nonstop marketing for one another. It's honestly probably very helpful because anytime one of them gets brought up, the other one gets brought up. I saw that Microsoft had a Barbie Xbox coming out and someone immediately was like, oh, Sony should make an Oppenheimer PS5. So they just market for each other. So they'll probably respectively do pretty well, although Barbie will definitely be bigger. But the biggest of them all probably, and my most anticipated easily, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning Part one, a little too much going on with that title, but with all of the other movies that have been coming out recently that have had cliffhangers, I really respect Mission Impossible for sticking part one in their title. Spider-Verse was gonna do that, then they changed the title, but with Mission Impossible, they're like, we know you're gonna be there. We know you're gonna come to the theater. We'll just be honest, we'll call it part one. So I respect that. That's the only thing that gets to me a little bit though, is that it is gonna be a cliffhanger, presumably, but I'm sure it's gonna be really, really good. This is a fantastic franchise, except for one of them, but if you skip that one, it is a great franchise. Like, every entry other than that one is just fantastic. And they've just been upping things with how Tom Cruise is willing to almost kill himself for our entertainment. I've avoided most of the trailers and everything for this because I don't want to have any bits of any of the stunts spoiled. The only thing I know is him driving a motorcycle off of a cliff. What a crazy man. But even just what I've seen from that, it looks great. I can't wait to see how the story pans out, what kind of insane action set pieces we get. Christopher McQuarrie taking hold of this franchise has just created great entry after great entry, and I don't think that's gonna stop. Mission Impossible is one of those franchises you can come to knowing pretty much for sure nowadays that it's gonna be probably one of the best of the year. And we already had John Wick 4 this year in terms of action. Extraction 2 just came out, very simple plot, but really great action choreography. Good year for action. Apparently this movie is tracking to have the biggest opening weekend of any of the Mission Impossible movies, which is great. That has happened with quite a few franchises this year from Creed slash Rocky to Scream and all these movies making bank. And I hope this one will be great. I know it'll be great and I hope it'll make all that money. Will we get to a billion for Mission Impossible? Will we recreate that Top Gun success? I don't know. We could, could come close, but we'll see. I'm excited. I think it's gonna be awesome. So are you excited to see Tom Cruise almost die? Are you excited to watch Barbie do whatever she's gonna do or Oppenheimer blow things up? Or a bunch of ghosts, whether they're in a mansion or a doorway or some kind of other movie that I didn't mention that you're anticipating. Let me know what you're looking forward to in July. Let me know what you think about the ones that I mentioned. Subscribe to the channel for reviews for all of these and more ranking videos, all that kind of stuff. There will be an Insidious ranking, a Mission Impossible ranking. I don't know if I'm going to have time to re-watch a bunch of Christopher Nolan movies and do a Nolan ranking. That's up in the air right now. But subscribe to the channel, like the video if you enjoyed it, leave your thoughts in the comments. Social media stuff is in the description, Twitter, Letterboxd, all that crap. That's down there. Thank you so much for checking out the video. I appreciate it. And I hope to see you for the next one.